Hello, I'm Cynthia Brooks from Fire and Glory International Ministries, and I just thank God that I can come before you today with another word from His Word. And I'd just like to talk to you today because we're getting ready to go into Thanksgiving, which is in, in, in America, uh, one of our major uh, national holidays that families get together and you know, cook, family or friends get together, cook, talk. Some folks look at a uh, football game or whatever that they do at this time of year. It's a time of, of gathering with people that you love, people that you care about, to just have a good time and, and eat a good meal. But God is not always in this picture with some families. And so I want to talk to you about Thanksgiving, what the what the true meaning of thanksgiving should be, especially for the people of God. And so I want to talk to you today and uh, come out first from the scripture of Psalms 107, verse 1. It said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the land from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. We have to understand that God has preserved us for such a time as this. We are living in probably the toughest time in history. There has been more deaths that has taken place over this past year of 2020, 2021. Not all from... Uh, you know, uh, this, 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 uh, uh, COVID, but also from, from, uh, just natural sicknesses, you know, people have just gotten sick from cancer and every other kind of issue, you know, a car accidents, uh, uh, whatever it's been, you know, shootings or whatever people have, have died. We've had a multitude of people leave this planet in 18, 19 months. So I want to talk about this thing we call family and friendships. You know, one of the things that I think so many people have taken for granted up until this past year has been the gift of family. And, you know, I, I can just remember families fighting over nothing, upset over one, with one another over something really small and not talking for years, sisters and, and brothers, not communicating, not talking, not having any kind of relationship because they were upset over some petty issue. Even if it was a major issue, what's so major that you can't forgive and keep it moving? So I want to talk about family. And I think family is more important now than it ever has been. Because one thing, you're going to have a lot of families right now that think this Thanksgiving is going to be, there's going to be one or more empty chairs where their family member is no longer there. Every family has suffered some degree of loss or have known someone that have, whether it was a family or a friend or friends or friends, family member, we've all have come to understand what it means to lose someone that we love. And so I want to just talk about that. First of all, be grateful, be thankful for your family members that you have, that have re that are remaining. It, it, it don't matter if you're different. It don't matter if you don't have anything in common. Just love them like they are and let them love you the way you are. I want you to think about we need to be thankful. When you sit down this year, and if you're able to gather or you want to gather with family members, I want you to take, take the time and look at your family members and say, thank you, God. Thank you that this person is, is able to sit at my table. Be grateful. Be thankful. All of us have lost loved ones, friends during this year. It's been a very, very, very difficult time. I've lost friends. I've known friends who've lost loved ones. And so that, you know, it's, it's just... It's, it's just a time that, that we're in right now that we've never seen before with so many deaths. So what should we be thankful for? One thing we should be thankful for is that we are still alive during the time when so many have left here. That we are still alive and we can still taste and smell and touch and walk. I don't care what has happened to you. You are still here. And if nothing else can be done, you can still give praise to your God. 
We got to come out of this narcissistic behavior that has crept into the land where people are, are, you know, we call them Karens and Kevins or whatever they call them, you know, trying to control people and, 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 and take control over people. We need to get over that. We need to be thankful that we, are, we can have relationships. And, you know, more importantly, too, let other people have relationships. Quit trying to rule people's lives. Quit trying to tell people what to do. Quit, quit trying to destroy other people's lives. Enjoy your life. Do you. I want you to think about this year to be thankful. If you have vision, be happy that you can see. If, if, if you can smell, be grateful that you can smell. People lost their taste and smelling, uh, or the sense, sense of taste and sense of smell uh, when some people, when they got sick with, with, with this illness. You can smell something, be glad. You can taste it, be grateful. You can hear, praise God. You can walk, you can breathe, whatever thing you can do, however wholeness, whatever wholeness is in your body, be grateful for it. I want you to think about God, that he has brought you from a mighty long way. Look, this, this little quick uh, 2020 and 2021, our entire world has changed that quick. Everything has changed. Nothing is the same. We have changed from being a society that could just, you know, just do what you want to do. Then even think about what rights you had because, you know, I, I can exercise my rights. Now, what do you hear people scream? Well, I, you know, they're taking away my rights. Did you appreciate them when you had them? Did you think about them when you had the right to do what you wanted to do? Wanted to do? Or, or did you just take life for granted? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe. We're, we're, we're to stop and take a deep, deep breath and say, maybe I need to look at what I have taken for granted. You know, I have, I have grandchildren and with my grandchildren, I look at them and I say, man, they, they, this generation have no idea what it means to, to play double Dutch and, you know, jump, jump rope and, uh, do double dutch or or play hopscotch or, or 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 play the game shoot marbles you know play checkers um red light green light you know uh playing it or all these different things that we did they have no clue what that is we my age had a childhood my children didn't do all the things i did but they still had a childhood now we come to a time in history where these kids don't have a childhood. They've learned things that children should never, ever, ever, ever know, hear, and or see. But through social media, they're able to see things that most adults didn't know about. So they were married or even older. But, but this, is, this is your generation. This is the generation, the ones that they call pandemic babies that are coming, that are, that are being born now. And everybody's saying how these babies are really fast now. But let me tell you that these two generations, the young ones now and the ones that are coming, these, these generations are the generation that we have to pour into to show them the way to God, to show them the way how to treat people, to show them the way how to love, to show them the way how to be kind, to show them the way how to be compassionate. We have to show them the way. They won't know it if we don't show them. They don't even know to be grateful. They don't even know to be thankful. You know why? Because we're living in a time in history where many children, not all of them, many children can get anything they want to get at the snap of a finger. I'm surprised I saw toys at the store because I didn't think kids still played with them. I don't see them. I think I got two grandkids who still play with toys. The rest of them, they rather have a device. So it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Do we understand that God is good? We serve a good God and his mercy endures forever. His mercy is always there. Everything else will fail you, but God never will. 
has mercy on us despite ourselves. He has mercy for us. His love endures forever. I know what it means to love. I'm a grandmother. And I love my grandbabies. I'm telling you, I love all 20 of them. They just, they just make my world. I love them. And I can't even imagine. You know, I remember when I was a young woman and I and I was looking at my babies, my seven kids when they were coming up, and I was saying, I don't know if I can love grandchildren like I love these children. What well, you do? You love your grandchildren the same. In fact, you're easier on them. My kids go like, this is the same woman that got on us about that, you know, that with your grandkids. Well, oh, let's just teach them something. Let's talk to them. We ain't gotta, you ain't gotta spank them for everything. Let's just talk to them. Of course, I don't live with them either. But you know, you know, God's love is like our love. He can love all of us universally all over this globe the same way at the same time. He is a loving God. Can we give thanks to God? Because he is God and he is merciful and he is compassionate. He understands our pain. He understands our hurt. He understands those things that bother us. He understands those things that upset us. Can we give God that kind of praise? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. That's what I want to see people do this Thanksgiving. Most of us will have a turkey, but you know, it's not about turkey. That's, that's the traditional bird that we use to eat on Thanksgiving. Dressing, turkey, maybe macaroni and cheese, and then you build it on from there. Oh, uh, candy yams, and then you build it on from there. Got to have a dessert. But it's not about turkey and dressing and candy yams and a vegetable and salad and a dessert. It is about being thankful to God for what he has done for you. It is about loving God for who he is and who he is going to continue to be for you. Because he is God and he changes not. He wants you to understand that he is always for you. Don't be so quick when you sit down to eat your food without blessing God, without thanking him. God, I Pray that you bless this food. Bless this gathering. It is God who is making it happen. I want you to understand and remember, it's not about the football game that happens afterwards. Communicate with one another. Talk to one another. Get, get, get into each other's head and enjoy each other's company. Make this the Thanksgiving to remember. Talk about the good things of your life. You know, even those who have passed on. You know, family is a gift. Family is a gift. You may have a family that you might be estranged from. I pray that you're able to, to come back and be reunited with your family. I pray that you're able to do that. Because that's what it, family is what it's all about. Getting together, breaking bread, understanding what our family was the point. You know, some 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 families are, are, are suffering from great loss right now. Pray for those families. Pray. They may not be able to get together this year, those who are just lost loved ones. Pray for them. Pray for their comfort. Pray that God would bless them and they get over whatever their whatever uh, the, the grief that they're going through. This is not a happy time for everybody. So while you sit down and you give thanks and you look around the table or what living room or at a park or hotel, uh, a, a meeting room somewhere, however, or wherever your family choose to meet, think about those who have lost loved ones. And I want to turn to now um, Psalm 7. Psalms chapter 7. Seven. Psalms chapter 7. I, I, I love the word. It is just such a, a blessing to know the word. Psalm 7 and verse 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. What does that mean? God is righteous. He is holy. He, he, he is one that we should be in awe of. 
because he's made everything possible. He's created all things by all things, all, by all things. Everything has been created by him. All things are created. There is nothing that is too hard for God. There is nothing that God misses. There is nothing that is left out. God said, it is good. When he finished creation week, he sat back and said, it is good. And it's still good. It's still good because creation is still here. So in this time, I, I pray that you can sit back and say, look, I, I, I can look at this beautiful blue sky. I can look around my room and thank God for all the things that he's given me. I can think about the people that he's placed in my life and be glad he's given me the sense of family. Or friends, there's nothing like faithful, loyal, loving friends. Nothing beats that. For those of us who are Christians, that we have been placed into the body of Christ, we are the body. Be grateful that you're part of the kingdom of God. Don't just sit down and eat your turkey. Have a little conversation about who God is and what he has done for you personally. You might want to take this thing into a testimony service. You know, just at the table, just start talking about his goodness, how he's brought you through. Everybody, everybody got a testimony. Talk about what God has done, what the sovereign God has done for you this year. How he's brought you through last year. And as people were saying last year, I can't wait for 2020 because 2020 is going to be better. Not. Well, it wasn't. But I tell you what, if you can hear my voice, you made it through 2021. You're making it through. We're in the, in the, 11th, the 11th month of the year. And if we make it to Thanksgiving, I want this to be the toughest, the most awesome Thanksgiving you ever had. Not because of the food. Food can be good, but because of God. Don't forget your God and the gift that he's given you. Not diamonds, not rubies, not gold, not silver, not a Lamborghini, not a Maserati. Matsurazi, whatever that car is called. Not a big grand home, all that stuff, brick and mortar and, and metal. Mm -mm. I want you to thank God for the friends, the human beings that you can talk to, who validate you, who make you know that you are loved. I want you to think about these, these friends and these family. The Bible says there's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. You got a good friend, you got a good thing going then. You know, I, I, I sit back and I think about all the things that God has done. And I, I'm just I'm just in awe of him. And in, in, in verse 17, it says, I, And I will sing praises to the name of the Lord Most High. Can we sing songs to him? Can we take some time on Thanksgiving and sing some songs? To send a sweet melody up to heaven. Send a sweet fragrance of praise up to him. Can we do that? It's a lot of negative and terrible things happening in our world. But it's so much good too. God has given us so much. He's given us life. He's given us breath. He's given us food to eat. When you can sit down with people that you love and you can enjoy them, you are rich indeed. Don't forget. Don't neglect. Don't just overlook the blessings that God has given you. Blessings is not in things. Blessings, is in, it, blessings are in people. And you know, the greatest blessing to me is the Holy Spirit, that he has given me the Holy Spirit. Make every effort. If you got a family member that you have kind of lost touch with, make every effort to forgive. Ask God, God, give me a heart to forgive my loved one. And I'm going to tell you when you know you're forgiven, really forgiven. You ask God to take the pain away. The Bible says pray for them. You ask God to forgive them. And then you pray for them. Here's, here's a kicker though. That you know now that you've blessed them. That you've forgiven them. When you ask God, bless them. 
Bless them, God. Bless their going outs and bless their coming in. Bless them when they lay down and when they rise up. Bless them, God. Now, if there's any kind of payback that needs to be done, let God do it. You stand in the place of forgiveness of your family members. Life is too short. Life is too short to be upset over, over something that might have happened. Those family members that might have injured you or friends that might have injured you or, or abused you or offended you, find a happy medium to forgive. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about where there should be a solid relationship. Forgive. My goodness, that's the greatest love you can give someone. That's a gift to forgive, and it's a gift to be forgiven. Oh, what blessing it is for someone to forgive you and then for you to forgive them. If you've been offended or rejected or, or whatever, forgive. Remember, reflect on God's hand, on his, his involvement in your life, his interactions in your life, his voice in your life. I pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Let's just enjoy the whole week leading up to it. As you cook dinner or whatever, invite your guests out. Plan how you're going to do it. Put God first. Amen. I pray that this message bless you because it blessed me giving it to you. Amen. God bless.